And I go to the captions, then I realize it's steroids, and every single every single top rated reply was like, "Dude, just wait till the trend cough kicks in. That's <clears throat> when it gets super gnarly." Holy shit. What's up, guys? Derek, more plays from Today so We're going to be reacting to uh, Cody Co. and Noel Miller reacting to uh, steroid TikToks. So um, I didn't even know this was a thing. Guys making like parodies of, uh, I guess, just like sketches of uh, stuff to do with gear on TikTok, which is pretty funny, actually. And uh, maybe I should get into that shit. <laughs> but um, they were talking about uh, a few things that. Uh, you know, I found directly relevant to my content and they're just fucking hilarious anyway. So, you know, it just tied in perfectly. I thought I'd do a reaction video to them reacting to these. And maybe in the future, I'm going to react to some of these. Uh, I'll dig around in TikTok and see if I can find some of these. They're pretty funny. But some of this was like science based, too, that I thought was worth commentating on. So let's get into it here. It's like, you know, those dudes that, that do those faces where they like just push really hard in their face oh, yeah, like, yeah, 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 swells yeah. up <laughs> yeah, push sweating the and all that out, shit yeah. <laughs> he looked like he was doing that but he wasn't he was just sitting oh. in front of the fan and the fan was blowing him like right in his face and he was like the, the caption was like when you uh, my, oh first week on trim or trim trim Is trim trend? yeah trim was trend trend first yeah. week on trend <laughs> so this is kind of interesting because it's like <laughs> I guess uh, when you're awake, it doesn't really seem to hit that hard as far as the sweats. But at nighttime, the uh, effect that trend has, one of the worst side effects is it uh, makes you basically just like, you just drench. This sounds terrible. It makes you like drench your fucking sheets, even in the middle of winter with uh, night sweats. It's uh, brutal. And it's really odd because it's one of the only compounds that really does this to a significant extent. And it's thought to be, uh, you know, it's hypothesized to be through its interaction with the progesterone receptor. Like you'll see, uh, you know, it's not common for, uh, uncommon for women to experience uh, hot flashes and things of this nature. And it's thought that Trenbolone interacts with this same kind of uh, mechanism through its antagonism of the progesterone receptor and some things like that, that can, have that effect, which is, um, you know, the way they're describing it, it's making it sound like some guy on DNP or something, but that's actually a common side effect on trend. And it, uh, you know, potentially might be the reason why you get such a shitty sleep on trend too. And maybe as an indirect effect, why you get the, you know, the beta amyloid plaque buildup that is purportedly a, uh, you know, only happens with that compound, even though that doesn't, I don't think that really plays out in practical application as the only compound that does that. Anyways, I'm kind of devolving into the science too much here, but anyways, trend makes you fucking sweat at nighttime. That's uh, something you should take into account if you're ever going to use it. And I'm sure if you've used it, you can attest to this too. You'll wake up just fucking drenched. And I was like, what the fuck is trend? And this guy's like huge, right? His traps take up like 90% of the fucking frame. And he looks like he's doing the push face. <laughs> and I'm I'm like, is this a joke? I don't understand this. This is a meme and I go to the captions, then I realize it's steroids and every single every single top rated reply was like, dude, just wait till the trend cough kicks in. That's when it gets super gnarly. Holy shit. And uh yeah, dude, I like uh oh man, I would have to take like five cold showers before noon and all this crazy Wow deep cut shit. Okay, so it's not <laughs> it's uh that's like above and beyond anything I've ever heard, having to take five cold showers. Um, you don't wait for the trend cough. You would probably get the trend cough far before you get the night sweats. Um, the trend cough, though, yeah, that's uh, that's the worst side effect, in my opinion. Actually, no, it's definitely not. That's like a short-term thing as opposed to, you know, obviously the actual health ramifications are actually worse. But I mean, as far as like a short-term acute thing that sucks, it's... Uh, the manifestation of trend cough is fucking ruthless. And if you've ever pinned a fat shot of trend ace, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about because it's almost, it's very unlikely that you've got away with pinning like a, at least, you know, a full cycle of trend ace and never once experienced trend cough unless you were using a very small amount and, um, you know, don't have a ton of experience with it. From taking a really strong steroid and I'm like, this is way, way better than real estate TikTok. I'm wow. now on steroid TikTok. This is where I want to be. Dude. Um, I need to go look at this shit because it sounds hilarious. That is nuts. I've always heard about Trend. Um, just like... Yeah. Because of MMA. What, I I, like, yeah. um, uh, a, a lot of guys get accused of being on Trend in MMA. 
It's very actually pretty uncommon for guys in MMA to pop for trend. Like usually when I dig into, um, you know, drug test results and whatnot, it's usually, you know, it's not usually the drug of choice, to be honest, which is interesting because it uh, definitely drives pretty significant performance outcomes. But in an MMA context, it's probably, you know, something that can uh, interfere with your airway to that significant extent. It's actually pretty negative in a cardiovascular endurance context. So it is um, not something that somebody in MMA would, uh, you know, benefit from. That'd be one of the uh, last choices I would choose personally. And that's, you know, ties in with the trend cough potentially. We don't really know for sure, but it definitely is not. Uh, if you ever use a lot of train, you'll know it can fucking zap your cardio. But that's, that's fucked up. <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, like it's, it throws you off a lot because, you know, you hear people talk about steroids. I don't know anyone that's taken anything crazy like that, you know? Yeah. Maybe like testosterone <clears throat> or whatever. What, or, um, or, um, what's, what's, di what's Diana <clears throat> Anabolics, anabo yeah. Anabolic steroids. Yeah. I think I know people that have taken those. So as far as which of those are anabolic steroids, so trenbolone is an anabolic androgenic steroid, dianabol is an anabolic androgenic steroid. Technically, testosterone is not an anabolic androgenic steroid because when you say anabolic, you would be implying that it has some level of tissue selectivity skewing in the anabolism direction rather than something that is designed to be a, not a hybrid, but more so like anything that is an AAS is something that is designed to be more tissue selective than testosterone as the reference androgen so testosterone is not really it's a sex steroid but it's not you know and it's a hormone but it's not an anabolic androgenic steroid it is just an androgen again these are just semantics though at the end of the day they're all fucking steroids it's like estrogen's a steroid too there's a lot of steroids in your body that uh it's just like a uh, overly um i guess just like a taboo word at this point that uh gets a bad rap because there are a lot of steroids in the body that don't uh, aren't associated with even muscle growth at all, really. But yeah, anyways, Dianabol is a uh, super old school anabolic steroid from uh, popularized in the golden era in the 70s, probably most uh, prominently by Arnold Schwarzenegger, the breakfast of champions. Um, and then uh, Trenblown, obviously an anabolic steroid too. He knows. Yeah, I but think then you read about crazy steroids, and I just think in my mind I'm thinking about like the Ru uh, you know the Russian dudes like injecting fucking whatever chemicals Synthol. in their biceps, <laughs> yeah, like that sort of shit. <laughs> and I'm reading the comments, and it's all dudes just like talking super casually about this awful side effects of this crazy strong <sighs> steroid. It's like the only compound that really has like such short term consequences, though. Like there's no other compound really. You know, you could obviously argue for certain things, but I mean, like, no compound <laughs> within like 60 seconds of injecting it, do you just like, <laughs> you just like feel it creep up on you and you're like, okay, like, here we fucking go, buddy. Right. That's a like whole... that, that. Those are the ones that like people say your balls shrink on and stuff like that. They will shrink on everything that uh, suppresses you, which is every anabolic androgenic steroid, except uh, potentially like proviron at a, uh, you know, therapeutic dose, but everything is going to suppress your endogenous testosterone production and by extension suppress your uh, or shrink your testicle size so uh, just to clarify that's like I, I went to reddit then afterwards and i was reading all like the the, the symptoms of people that take it and it just was wild i don't know well that's i mean i'm kind of curious to take it because that's the problem i have is my balls are too big if my balls were smaller then i'd look more proportionate <laughs> yeah yeah right right that's like, uh, what was that saying by Rich Piana? It's like, as long as the, the dick hangs lower than the balls or something, <laughs> that's like the good thing about gear. I don't remember what he said, but that was like one of his most famous quotes. The higher your balls are, the bigger your fucking dick looks. I would rather have my balls shrink 20 to 30%, and my balls have shrunk 20 to 30%, so my dick looks even bigger than it did. Right. So if you're Italian, I have the me, same problem, but with my ass cheeks. Uh, this massive, ma massive dumper. Yeah, yeah. I got a huge wagon <clears> on me. Yeah, it's like every time, <laughs> my ass is so big. Every time I go down on my girl, she thinks I'm throwing it back. But I'm just that's just how I am, babe. <laughs> she thinks I'm poking it up in the air. I mean, that's just that's just me. That's just yeah, lying she's like flat. stop, stop. What are you twerking? I'm like, no. I'm just trying to get my tongue. That's that is inappropriate, Noel. I'm like, I have to wear a sundress. <laughs> That's sick. That sounds like a sick fit. Yeah. Let's see yeah, what it okay. does. Hold on. Ready? Trend yeah. cough. Reddit. 
Okay, so here they were talking about Trenkov, which is uh, the most interesting part, in my opinion. So hang on. Trend, man. <laughs> Fuck it. Like, I'm down. I'm like, fucking down. Like dude. in a year, when we just have no other ideas left, let's just take steroids. <laughs> let's see Weird. what it does. Okay. Hold on. Ready? Trend. Yeah. You can tell these are the kind of guys, though, that think that they would take it and just like turn into Ronnie Coleman when it's uh, definitely not the case whatsoever. Um, they obviously have like an overly exaggerated uh, perception of what they do. Like they'd probably be shocked that some of their buddies are on trend or fucking any gear at all that don't look like anything. Dude, we could actually become the 680 meme. You know what I'm saying? Like, it could come full circle. I That would be fucking hilarious, dude. If it, then we we became, like, the Jim Tickle guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and we became Ronnie Coleman. Like we re yeah, yeah. Dude, what did I say? We became Ronnie Coleman. He's, he's obviously kidding, but I mean, like, if this even crossed his mind as, like, an actual possibility, I don't think it did, but I mean, like, I feel like they definitely have the overly hyped uh, perception of what this stuff does. We really embodied the whole thing. And then we, we used to talk about the gym all the time. Because we were always going. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> we haven't talked about the gym in forever. No. I mean, I want to I wanna fucking... Mm, as soon as, I canceled all my shit. As soon as a boxing gym opens up, I am there. Or a kickboxing gym. Yeah, but I feel like... In both. I don't <clears throat> care. <clears throat> what do you get? They... From a steroid? Oh, yeah, this is, trend is you inject it, too, so it's like... <clears throat> I wonder how that works. Why, why, like, why does it make you cough? Difficulty breathing. It's oh. pulmonary oil embolism. Yeah, it's definitely not a pulmonary embolism, but um, I'll, I'll let him continue before I comment further. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So the, what? there's, like, oil building up in, like, your fucking heart? I have no idea, dude. Some some dude just comments. I just hold on to my sink and go, here we go. <laughs> it's funny. And it sounds horrible. You can see Noel's expression. He's just like, holy shit. <laughs> and um, that's not far off, dude. Like, that's actually... I would probably say that's exactly what I do, too. I would just go, like... It only happens with acetate, too. It seems like enanthate, the likelihood is very low. The first time I ever used it was actually uh, with enanthate, and I was in for a rude awakening, um, a couple blasts down uh, the line when I tried acetate for the first time, and I was like, holy shit. Like, you you know, I thought I was immune to trend cough, and it turns out it's just because I was using the enanthate ester for a while, and um, when I switched to acetate, down the line, I forget which, you know, sub some subsequent cycle thereafter. Um, that sounded so fucking pretentious. I don't know why I said it like that. Some subsequent cycle thereafter. Um, it uh, was way worse. It, uh, it hits you like a fucking truck. And it's like, you better be like ready to like take it on. Because you can't, you can't get out of it. You can only like, it's almost like trying not to puke. You have to like focus <laughs> very hard on not coughing. And um you have to just like willpower your way through it for like two minutes and not freak out too much. And some guys, they, uh, you know, freak out way too much and think they're dying. They'll like literally call 911 <laughs> when um, it's going to pass and it's just an acute short term effect. And it's a super fucked up weird one. But uh, and it definitely freaks you out more than anything you'll ever do. Like you might have, uh, you know, the random shot that's like a squirter and you just have like a projectile fucking bloodstream fly across the room. Or you have, uh, you know, wake up drenched in sweat. <laughs> or you have, uh, I don't know. Nosebleed from super high blood pressure from the dianable or um, this, you know, and it's, you can tell it's coming. You'll be pinning it. And if you're unfortunate enough to not have it come on before you're done your shot, dude, that's the worst because you're like in the middle of pinning and you're like hacking up the fucking lung while trying to not like have the thing like bend in your fucking ass at the same time. And you're trying to like finish it or just like prevent it from like flying around. It's just like, it's a nightmare, dude. So, <laughs> Keep that in mind if you're ever gonna use Trenace because it's uh, a likely outcome. And something I found was, uh, it seemed like it was always worse in areas with scar tissue buildup. And it also seemed worse the faster you push the more likely it seemed like it was gonna occur. I don't know, it was like the virgin muscles that just weren't as abused pinning wise seemed to uh, not bring it on as easily. Whereas if I pinned a spot that I had uh, used many times before, or one of my most like uh, frequently abused uh, spots in my fucking ass, the likelihood was much higher. And uh, it would be like, with Ace, it would be like one out of every like three to four shots it would happen. It was just brutal when it would happen. It was like, literally, hold on to your sink and you're just like, all right. 
And you're just like trying to like will your way through it without just like hacking up a lung. Uh, is it worth it, man, to be yoked? <laughs> that that reminds me of this uh, that some. It's funny because that's exactly what you're thinking after you go through it too, or while you're in the middle of it, you're like, should I really be using this compound? <laughs> Why? Well, like, it feels like you have fucking like not fire in your lungs, but it's like you're just hacking up a lung because it feels like there's something that needs to be coughed out and it's just not coming out. It's just like a dry heaving cough that just like won't go away. The brute force of it hits at like 30 seconds in and then after like a minute and a half, it starts to taper off a lot and you feel like you're out of the woods and then it kind of goes away after like two minutes and you're just like, you're like, do I really want to do this every other day with acetate? Do I really want to? And that's what you think every single time. YouTube video I saw of a dude, he's like some Irish bodybuilder. Um, and he's talking about like being stage lean, you know, <clears throat> like, like looking like lean as fuck as a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. He's basically saying, yeah, I'm stage lean and I'm <clears throat> the only reason I'm doing it is like, I'm pretty much addicted to it. But honestly, this is the most miserable life experience ever. <laughs> it's like your relationship with food is completely gone. Like you fucking hate it. You're just doing it to do it. It's honestly sort of accurate. I feel like, like obviously there are, uh, there is a sustainable like middle ground where you can be like, you know, nine, 10% body fat if you're enhanced and like have a semi lenient lifestyle and at least have the opportunity to, you know, have a bit of like a cheat day, like once a week and kind of like re diet yourself back and prime yourself for the next cheat day, you know, seven days later and kind of like, you know, have a decent output of, uh, you know, training to maintain a decent body composition. You have so much muscle, you just, it's very hard to gain fat unless you like really push it over the limit, but it's still very difficult to do. Like there's not very many guys who do it even on gear. Most guys on gear look like shit, to be honest. It's, you know, it's not a magic ticket or a, uh, you know, magic uh, pill or a magic shot that just like keeps you shredded and jacked. Like it is very difficult to uh, maintain a lean body composition. Certainly stage lean is miserable. There's no one who gets stage lean who would tell you it's a fun experience because you're basically starving yourself of nutrients or at least depriving yourself significantly above and beyond what your body feels it needs to maintain itself. So at that point, your body's screaming for fucking food and nutrients and trying its hardest to maintain homeostasis and you're basically fighting against uh, your own biology at that point. So it's like, yeah, expectedly, the outcome is you, uh, your hunger goes through the roof, your, all you can think about is food at that point. Your <laughs> everything, your concentration and focus goes out the window. Um, your relationship, even with people, especially if you're on trend, gets uh, super toxic. You get super irritable. You get super. Uh, you're just impossible to uh, be around at, at a certain point if you're competing for the most part. And um, yeah, that sounds pretty fucking accurate to me. He's like, when you're in the gym and you get your little 30 second Instagram clip of you looking lean, looking energetic, and and pumping weight. He's like, that's probably the only time you actually have energy. It takes you two hours to work out because there's no fucking fuel in your system and you're just dying and you're just pushing yourself to get through every single rep. It just feels like murder. That's, uh, for an actual like competing bodybuilder, that sounds accurate. <laughs> but for like, I, like I said, for most people, it should be possible to maintain, you know, like 10% striking range body fat percentage year round without suffering too, too much. You just have to be very, very strict and be very intelligent and calculated how you approach your lifestyle. So stage lean, yeah, it's a miserable experience, but having a, like what Cody and Noel would consider, you know, like shredded um, is probably like 10 to 12% body fat. And that is a sustainable practice year round. And frankly, there are, there are naturals who do that too. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, priming your body properly, getting enough muscle on your frame and uh, exercising enough, training hard. It's not, uh, you know, it's not like, I don't know. It, it obviously genetics plays a role too. And like there are guys, like I said, who are on gear who can't, won't even be able to do that. But a lot of it is just laziness too and not, you know, adhering to a diet protocol that is uh, intelligently designed. So, you know, suffering to single digits. Yeah, that's, you know, sounds accurate, but don't let it cloud your judgment into thinking that, oh, like it's impossible to stay, you know, have a six pack year round. And like, that gives me the justification to just fucking binge eat. And it's like, that's not the case. <laughs> Damn. He was saying like, so if you were to ask me. Like, I feel like Cody's face is almost like satisfied hearing that because he knows that 
okay, so it's not just me that I can't, you know, get into the get fucking shredded conditioning. It's like these guys hate their life. So that makes me feel, <laughs> makes me feel better about the fact that it's that impossible to get that to that level. And it's like, yeah, but we're talking like fucking like 5% body fat is a lot different than 10% body fat. So, you know, I would, you know, Cody, I think you could get the fucking 10%, dude. Just takes a bit of commitment. Uh, you know, should I attempt to be stage lean? I would tell you no. <laughs> so he wanted to be stage lean all the time? Well, uh, he's, he's, you know, he, he competes, I guess. And like, he's a bodybuilder. Yeah, but like for competition... Yeah. So they sort of talk a bit more about bodybuilding, competing and stuff. And, um, you know, the trend cough is the main thing I kind of want to react to. And I might go do, uh, I might go find some of these because they sound pretty hilarious. I'm going to go find, dig up some TikToks and react to them in a future video probably. But um, yeah, the response to uh, trend and what it does, it's uh, thought to be mediated through uh, the increase of something called bradykinin, which is a inflammatory marker essentially in your body that can cause a... Um, coughing fit essentially and it can also be induced by uh um ace inhibitors interestingly enough but uh you know it's kind of odd how it seems to happen more commonly with trend ace than with trend hex or trend enanthate um and even other compounds it doesn't seem to uh happen to the same extent grant that i've had coughing fits from certain other compounds but it's more so it seemed like it was just like using sites that were overly abused and it like I don't know. It was just like the absorption of it in certain sites seems to impact how it's going to affect you at the end of the day. And there is no real like hard hitting scientific explanation for it that I've come across that you can definitively say this is the reason it happens. But it seems to be regulated through some sort of prostaglandin response that's, you know, inflammatory. Um, it, its roots of like starting are inflammatory in nature. So who knows though? Because it seems to pass very quickly and it's just odd like for a compound with like a... <laughs> like multiple day half-life or something for it to just be like done in like 90 seconds, you know? So why would it just spike this peptide and then like, you know, be out of your system super quickly like that, even though the compound is active in your system for days, it's just kind of odd, you know? And the acetate versus the enanthate, I thought it was something to do with the solvents used for a while, but um, um, I don't really know. Maybe one of you guys has a better explanation. This is one of the things I never really dug into too hard, but it seems, uh pretty prevalent with trend ace in particular and i would uh advise caution when using trend ace that that should be should be an expected outcome like you know you hear about like the side effects of gear like oh like you know cardiovascular disease this that and it's like those are all things that accumulate down the line and you don't really think twice about when you're first getting into it because you think you're a superhuman in your early 20s but trend cough it's gonna get you regardless of who you are if you're using trend ace it's almost undoubtedly going to happen at least once by the end of your blast so just be aware of that and it sucks so just be prepared to uh like they like they said put your hands on the counter and be like here we go because that's <laughs> that's basically the approach you need to take so thank you guys for watching please like subscribe check out my blog more plates more dates.com follow me on instagram at more puts underscore more dates facebook snapchat bitch you twitter tiktok apple Podcasts. if you want to listen on audio and not burn through your data on youtube and you're listening in the car or at the gym or whatever if you want to support the channel you can check out anything i am associated with in the video description below my trt clinic or it's all telemedicine by the way so you know super convenient you don't even need to go to a doctor's office to get it done um it's all from the comfort of your own home if you want to check out gorilla mode gorilla mind my turnkey nootropic and pre-workout formulas i encourage you to just go pull your current pre out of the cupboard right now um bring it back to uh your phone your desktop wherever you are sitting on the toilet sitting at your desk i don't really care look at the label compare it to ours and uh look at the dosages look at the l-citrulline look at the glycerol look at the uh you know agmatine sulfate look at the uh nitric oxide precursors look at the uh plasma expanders look at the hyperhydrating agents look at the cognitive enhancing nootropic and stimulant complex and uh just look at gorilla mode honestly it speaks for itself i think it is one of the top if not the top pre-workout hybrid product in the market right now. As far as the stimulant-free formula, Gorilla Mode Nitric, this has no stimulants, obviously, no nootropics either. You can use it at nighttime without having to worry about impeding your sleep quality, and it has an even higher dose of L-citrulline. This is the maxed out efficacious dose in the clinical literature that no more would be of any benefit whatsoever. Literally 10 grams, not the minimal efficacious dose, but the max efficacious dose, not inflated with malic acid either. And we have a higher dose of glycer pump. We have the nitrosagene in here. We have the Vasodrive AP, so you can 
leverage several different vectors of vascularity enhancement and uh, vasodilation that you would otherwise not get with other products that are simply leveraging the NO precursor vector. We are leveraging many different vectors in this product to achieve intracellular hyperhydration, um, vasodilation, as well as even in inhibiting the angiotensin converting enzyme with vasodrive AP. So there are a lot of ways that this product uh, sends head and shoulders above the rest as a pure performance product, in my opinion, with no stimulants in it. And then the stimulant only product, this is Gorilla Mode Stim. It is basically Gorilla Mode Classic, but without any of the pump products. So it is just the stimulant and nootropic complex, but at an even higher dose. So we doubled the tyrosine, doubled the Kana, have a higher dose of n phenethyl dimethylamine citrate, higher dose of caffeine. It is for the stim junkies out there or for those who just want a cost-effective pre that is uh, you know, much better price-wise, I guess, much cheaper price-wise and uh, hits super hard, but uh, doesn't have all of the other ingredient, ingredients in there for pump and performance. So if those interest you, check them out. Video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.